hello guys welcome back to my channel on today's tutorial i will demonstrate how to draft cut and sew an extended bat loop with a modesty panel and a yoke for a corset dress an extended back loop is one that goes below the waistline this design detail is common in wedding dresses high-end dinner gowns and special occasion dresses hi my name is Ayo and welcome to 011 clothing tutorials. On this channel, I upload DIYs, pattern drafting and sewing tutorials. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. Thank you. To draw the extended back loop pattern, I will make use of my basic sketch pattern. I will of course make use of the back sketch pattern for this. I also need my basic bodice pattern. I will make use of the back bodice for the drafting of the back loop pattern. So in the previous tutorial, I have already gone ahead to alter the front part of this basic bodice into a cup bustier pattern with yoke. The link for this tutorial will be above and in the description box below. I will be making use of the front yoke pattern as a guide to draft the back yoke pattern. So this is the front yoke pattern. I will now use this as a guide to mark the back shoulder width. like this and also where the yoke ends on the ham hole like this i will now connect this point to the center back of the pattern using a curve like this i will extend the the waist that upwards like this I will now measure and mark one quarter inch on both sides of the line like this and I will now connect these two points to the tip of the waist dart. So in all, we will be removing half an inch dart from the upper part. For the waist cinching, I will measure and mark one inch at the upper part like this and half an inch at the end like this. I will now connect the two points together like this with my ruler. So this is where the loop will be inserted when making the dress. I will now go ahead to connect the shoulder to where the loop will start using my curve like this. So this is the yoke. And this is the new center back. You can go ahead to cut out your back pattern pieces if you are okay with the alteration that we've done so far. But I will raise mine a little bit at the center back. So this is optional. I want it to be more covered at the back. So I'll raise it by two inches at the center back like this. I will now go ahead and redraw the neckline curve for the yoke. I will extend the center, the center back cinching up to the newly raised neckline. I will now go ahead to cut out the back pattern pieces. I 
So now I'm done with cutting out the pattern. At the middle of the neckline, I will hold a tiny dart of about one quarter inch and I will hold it in place with my cello tape like this. Also remember that I, remo I removed a tiny dart of about half an inch from this upper part. So I'll go ahead to hold the dart of about half an inch on the lower part of the yoke as well. I will cello tape it in place. So now I have gone ahead to place the back pattern pieces on the new pattern paper and I have cello taped the armhole area of the pattern to the new pattern paper. Remember that the half an inch that from this part of the pattern, we remove half an inch from this part of the pattern and it will create a short edge. So I need to add this back at the armhole area. So I will measure and mark half an inch like this. I will now redraw the armhole curve for the back pattern. So now that I'm done adding back the half an inch, I will now go ahead to cut out the pattern pieces. So this is the basic sketch pattern which I'm going to assume you already know how to draft on your own but in case you don't know how to draft this I will drop the link in the description box below and the link will also be above. So the first thing I will do is to measure and mark half an inch for the waist section which is exactly for the waistline at the back bodies. I will I want the loop to end two inches above the hip line so I'll measure and mark two inches from the hip line. And I will connect the two points together like this with my ruler. I will also connect it to the, to the zip allowance at the center back using a horizontal line. I will now go ahead and cut out the back pattern like this. I will close the waist darts using my cello tape. I will now go ahead and create the slash lines for the skate by dividing the skate pattern into three, three equal sections. So these are the three pattern pieces for the back bodies. I want to increase the waist cinching at the back by one inch at the upper part. This is optional. And at the waistline, I will increase it by half an inch. I will now connect the two points together like this with my ruler. So I use a total of two inches for the waist cinching at the upper part and one inch at the aim. I will now trim it off. So for the waist cinching, we use two inches at the upper part and one inch at the aim, which is the waistline of the bodies. So this is the new center back. I also do the same thing for the skirt pattern. And this is this back skirt pattern. And I will also go ahead to increase the cinching by half an inch at the waistline. Like this. I'll measure a mark half an inch like this. I will now connect these two points together like this with my ruler. I will now trim it off. So I've also increased the waist cinching for the, for the sketch pattern to one inch. These are all the pattern pieces for the back and I'll go ahead and paint the pattern pieces on a new pattern paper like this. 
It is now time to drop the molded C panel. For the upper part, I use a total of 2 inches for the waist cinching. I will now multiply these 2 inches by 2 because we have 2 pieces for the back, 2 back pieces. I will now add additional 3 inches allowance to this and this is equal to 4 inches plus 3 inches and this is equal to 7 inches. For the lower part, I use 1 inch for the waist cinching. So I will multiply the 1 inch by 2. Add 3 inches allowance. And this is equal to 5 inches. So using my free hand, I will go ahead to trace out the shape at the center back of the dress like this so i'll go ahead to measure and mark seven inches at the upper part like this and i'll square a line across At the lower part, I will measure and mark 5 inches. Now we also square a line across like this. I will now join these two points together. And this is the modesty panel. To cut out the skirt of the dress, I will fold my fabric like this on bias in a triangular form. I will now go ahead to cut out the skirt to slash and spread the skirt on this fabric. So I have gone ahead to cut out the skirt. I slashed and spread the skirt pattern following the slash line that I have already drawn on the pattern. I spread the aim by 8 inches on the two sides. I use half an inch seam allowance at the waistline, half an inch at this side, and 1.5 inches side seam allowance. I've also gone ahead to cut out the lining, and the lining is 3 inches shorter than the main fabric. I will also go ahead to cut out the modesty panel. I use half an inch seam allowance all through, except the M, where I used 2 inches allowance because I want the modesty panel to go down below, below the opening at the center back. So I will cut out the modesty panel like this. So now I've already gone ahead to cut out all the pattern pieces for the bodies of the dress. I use half an inch seam allowance all through for the side seams where I use 1.5 inch side seam allowance. And at the end of the modesty panel, I use 2 inches seam allowance at the end. Now 
So you should make sure you notch the sides that will be joined together for the center back and the side back pieces. This is the yoke. I cut two pieces on the main fabric. And two pieces on the lining fabric. I have interfaced the two lining pieces. I use the same fabric as the lining for the yoke. These are the two side back pieces. I cut two pieces on my main fabric and two pieces on the lining fabric. And the two lining fabric pieces have been interfaced. And these two pieces are the center back pieces. I cut two pieces on the main fabric and two pieces on the lining fabric and I've already gone ahead to interface the two lining pieces. This is the modesty panel. I cut two pieces of the modesty panel on the main exterior fabric and I've already interfaced the wrong side of the two pieces. So what I'll do now is to go ahead to join the center back and the side back pieces together. I will use half an inch seam allowance for the joining. But first I'll pin the pieces in place. Right sides will be together. I'll be joining the side back pieces and the center back pieces for both the main exterior fabric and the lining fabric as well. So now the stitching has been done as you can see. So these are the lining pieces. Please ignore the front piece and focus on the back lining pieces only. So I will sew regaling bonnies, boning to this side and this side and this side. I will avoid the same lines when sewing. So that has been done as you can see. So these pieces are what make up the back bodies. I will now go ahead to stitch the yoke to the lower part using half an inch sewing allowance. Right sides will be together. So now that has been done, I will now use the lining pieces to turn the raw edges like this. I will first pin in place, then I will take it to my sewing machine and I will stitch using half an inch sewing allowance. So now the stitching has been done as you can see.
what I'll do now is to go ahead and join the bodies to the skirts of the dress. So now I've gone ahead to join the bodies to the skirt part of the dress, as you can see. And I've also rectified an error at the upper part of the dress. At the center back, I made the upper parts. I made sure that the lining is separate from the main fabric, starting from the beginning of the yoke down to the end. This is because I'll be using the lining to turn the raw edges of the loop after sewing them in place. So I need the lining and the main fabric to, to be separate from the yoke down to the hem. So for this second back piece, I've already gone ahead to fix the loop. I will now go ahead to show you how I did this using this second back piece. So I have here these two row pieces which I've already sewn in place. I will go ahead to cut it into tiny pieces and each piece will be two inches long. Next I will measure and mark the position of the loop at the center back of the dress. The loops will be one inch apart. So I'll measure and mark one inch at the center back of the dress like this. So now I'm on my sewing machine and these are the loop pieces which I've already cut out and they are all two inches long. I will now go ahead to sew the loops to the center back of the dress. I will be sewing the loop to the right side of the main fabric only at the center back. I will leave the lining fabric alone for now. So now that I'm done with the stitching of the loop to the center back of the dress, what I'll do now is to turn over the lining so that the right sides are together, right sides of the lining and the main fabric are together. So I'll be sewing a rigilim bony to the center back of the dress. This is the rigilim bony and this is completely optional. It gives the back of the, of the dress extra structure. And this is completely optional. The rigilim bony should be within the half an inch seam allowance at the center back and it should not go beyond this half an inch seam allowance because if it goes beyond the half an inch, you are already taken out of your dress measurements. This regilling bony will make the back to be curved, but you can always get rid of this curve by pressing it with your steam iron, by pressing the regilling bony with your steam iron.
so these are the two back pieces and i've joined them together as you can see at the lower part below the loop so this is the wrong side as you can see i joined the pieces together and i made the lining separate from the main fabric And this is what the inner part of the dress looks like. You can see how neat the finishing is. So this is the modesty panel. I have here two pieces. So I'll go ahead and stitch the two pieces together using half an inch seam allowance and I will leave a turning gap here at the upper part of the modesty panel. So now I've sewn the two pieces together and I've turned it to the right side and this is the turning gap which I'm going to stitch in place on my sewing machine. This is the modesty panel and I've already stitch the turning gap in place also note that on the main dress i've already joined the front and the back pieces together at the at the shoulders and also at the, also at the side seams i will now go ahead to use invisible and stitching technique to join the modesty panel to the center back of the dress some people called it call it slip stitching and I will use a needle and thread to do this. So now I've gone ahead to fix the modesty panel to the center back of the dress. Because of the bony at the center back of the dress, you will notice that the dress will not lie flat. You can always use a seam iron to press and correct this curve. So now this is the full dress with the sleeves which have already been fixed to the armhole and, and I also have a, this very long group which I will be using to lace the corset at the back this rope is very long and it's around 130 inches long So I will now go ahead to lace the extended back loop of the dress like this. So that's it guys, we are done. If you find this video helpful, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, share this video with your friends who are interested in sewing and do not forget to subscribe to my youtube channel if you haven't done so already. See you in my next tutorial, bye and thank you so much for watching.